Okay, everyone, some really great news. There is now a new way to create 3D models for your Unity projects, and it's absolutely free. It's called Paint 3D. So how do you get Paint 3D? It's part of the Windows 10 Creators Update. You should automatically get it within the next few weeks. If you haven't already, you might have, but if not, you should get it in the next few weeks. It was released April 11th, which as of this recording was three days ago. And as I said, you should automatically receive it. If not, you can go to the Windows Update portion of your computer and there should already be a message there saying good news creators update is available click here for more information it takes you to the windows website and there will be a manual downloader there you just run that link and then the download will be uh, automatically run and install on your computer so it's basically one click and you're done now having said that don't do this in the middle of your work day make sure it's the end of the day your computer isn't going to be needed for a couple hours because it does take a while Okay, so when you've, when you've updated your computer to the creator's update, in the Windows menu, under the letter P, you will see Paint 3D. I've already dragged and dropped it and put it into my taskbar. So you click here, Paint 3D, some really great information here. I'm going to click on New. Now, before going any further, I want to make a couple points. First of all, this is not meant to be a full uh, featured tutorial about Paint 3D. This is meant to be introductory to let you know that there's this new free to use 3D modeling program that you can utilize to make 3D models for your Unity projects. You no longer have to rely on the asset store and hope that what you want is out there. You can make what you want. Second thing, there is a scaling issue, and that is when you export the object and then import it into Unity, it is enormous. That's not a problem because Unity allows for object scaling, so you can fix that easy. We'll get to that in a few minutes. And the last thing to mention is that there's also a material issue. When you create an object, you select a material. You can see there's four different types, and you select a color. The problem is this doesn't necessarily translate well into Unity, and that is you'll see a material, but it's not necessarily going to be exactly what you want, but you can always tweak the material within Unity anyways. So this just gets you up and running, and you can make the fine-tuning in Unity. So just want to let you know there's a, a, a few hiccups, but this is a brand new application, and Microsoft does seem like they want to support it because it was prominently uh, spoken about when they talked about the creator update. Okay, so here is our canvas. First thing we're going to do is going to change the canvas size. Now, changing the canvas size, you could shrink this down, which would slightly mitigate the scaling issue. I don't recommend it. Um, the scaling issue, as I said, can be adjusted within Unity itself. Now, why would you change the size of the canvas? Well, because you want it to be proportional to what you're making. So this would be fine if, say, you're making a banana, a kayak, a rowboat, something like that. It's perfect an alligator, something that's wider than it's tall. Now, if you wanted to make a giraffe, then this isn't such a good proportion. You'd really want to shrink this in so it's taller than it's wide. And if you're making something that's roundish, then you're probably looking to make a square canvas. That way it's proportionate in all sides. So the first one I'm going to do is going to be square. So we can just pull this in like this. You can bring the top down a little, and now you have a small canvas, and now it's square-ish. So let's go to the 3D Model tab. One of my pet peeves about Unity is it has cubes, it has orbs, it has cylinders, and it has capsules as uh, primitives, as basic 3D models. For some reason, it doesn't have rings. It doesn't have cones. It doesn't have triangles, pyramids. So there's some very basic shapes that it's missing. Well, Paint 3D comes with a couple of those. So like here we have, they call it a donut. So it's a ring and you have a cone. So what you can do is if these are the kind of shapes you're going to use in your projects, typically you make a couple and then every time you start a new project, you can pull them in. That way you have access to them just like the other uh, primitives that Unity comes with. 
So let's go ahead and make one of these. So when you have the tool selected, okay, you then have to choose a material. We'll do polished metal. And then you have to choose a color. Let's go to like gray. Now you just drag. And there you go. You can move this around. Center it. This rotates it. This rotates it. And this rotates it. So on the three different axes. So like if I do this, that's really uh, rotating on the, uh, what would be the Y axis, the vertical axis. Up here is the undo button. This rotates it really on the X axis because it's, it's rotating along the horizontal axis. Again, undo buttons up here. And this rotates it on the Z axis because it just rotates circularly. I'm not gonna bother because since it's a circle, you're really not gonna see much of anything happen. Now this will let you know the position of this object in a 3D environment. When you only have a single object, it's not really a big deal. It's probably important to center the object. I'll have to test a little bit more to find out for certain, but really this feature here is if you have multiple objects. So say you're creating a landscape and you have, it, it's all meant to be a static object. And so you have like maybe mountains in the background and then some trees in the foreground. Well, you wanna make sure those trees aren't too far, you know, in the foreground and they're actually lined up correctly and things like that. So if you click on this, there you go. What you're seeing is you see the canvas in the background, and you see a grid, like a translucent grid that's kind of bluish, that shows you the center of the object. So if you push this up, so I'm not, so you're still holding the button and you're just pushing up, you see how the bottom of that grid is moving up. So if you move it so it matches the bottom of the canvas, you have now centered that object on the canvas. Now, like I said, this is really a feature that you use for multiple objects in a single model. So you can do this. It might help when you're choosing a center point later on. But for now, I just want to let you know this feature is here. And it's really for when you have multiple objects. And then you just let go. So as I said, this first one is really just meant to be importing a, a new primitive into the system. So we're going to click up here. I'm going to choose save as and I'm going to choose export. This is extremely important. See this FBX? When you click on this, you have two choices, 3MF and FBX. FBX is the format that Unity uh, recognizes. So you want to make sure you're saving it as an FBX. And then we'll change this, we'll just call this ring. And it gets saved into the 3D object folder. Now you could save your project as well, but it's just the ring, so I'm not worried about it. So I'm going to click up here and choose new. Okay, so now it doesn't reset the canvas, keeps the canvas the same size. So what we're going to do now is we're gonna make something a little bit more detailed. Let's click on the cone and let's click on green and we'll go to map. And now we make a cone. And now we, over here you can see the tools have changed their contextual now because now you have an object selected. So now it's like, do you want to copy it? Do you want to paste it? Well, yes, we do want to copy and paste. So copy, paste, and now you have another one. Grab the corner and you can scale this. So it's very primitive, but you're making a rudimentary Christmas tree or just an evergreen in general. Again, copy, paste. We'll talk more about it when I've actually imported it, but this imports as an object with all these individual components. So say you want an object to be destructible, you can certainly, uh, you, you'll certainly have the ability to do that because you'll have all these individual components within Axis. And again, copy, paste, make this one even wider. 
And this is just one application. You could use this for, say, uh, tip of an arrow, tip of a missile, things like that. Now we're going to go back to the 3D Objects tab. And now we're going to choose the cylinder. And now we're going to choose a different color. Let's choose like a brownish color. And this will be the trunk. So we'll put this here. Kind of center it. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use that feature that I talked about where we click on this. Because now that you've got multiple objects, you really do want to make sure they're centered. So you click on this. And we're going to just push this back. So again, you see the bottom of that um, grid matching the bottom of the canvas. And now you just do that for each one. Push it back. So if nothing else, the canvas is effectively acting as a point of reference so that you can line things up. And it's just left click and hold. All right, so now you have a very basic tree. You can go up here, save as, export, and again, you want to use the FBX format. And we'll call this tree. Now let's go over to our Unity project. So here's our empty Unity project. And it's just a matter of dragging and dropping those objects into the asset area. So we go to our folder. This is a new folder created when you update to creators update. Here's the ring and here's the tree. It's just drag and drop. That easy. Just like that, you've created your own 3D objects, your own 3D models, and imported them into Unity. Notice some folders are created when you import them as well as the materials. So let's take the ring. We'll drag and drop it, and you can see this is enormous. Now, maybe you want it to be this big. I'm thinking of something like the original Halo. When you're on the ground, you look up and you see the ring arching up through the sky, so you might want something that big. But if you don't, you just click on the asset itself down here, and you can scale this down like to 0 0.01. So even that kind of extreme scaling doesn't seem to create any kind of distortion. So like I said, it, it's too big to begin with more than likely, but it's easily uh, fixable. Also, like I said, this really doesn't look like a metal gloss, a glossy metal. So you would need to go into the material folders and make some changes to the corresponding material. I'm not going to go through that now. Uh, ma changing materials is really a separate topic in and of itself, but this is a fully rendered, rotatable 3D object. So there we go. Now, let's go to the other object. Here's the tree. Each object has its own scale factor. So drag and drop this into the environment. Go back to the tree, and we'll change it to 0 0.01. Apply, and there's the tree. Now, if you notice, there's a little arrow here, because as I said, you're actually importing the individual meshes. So you could actually make this destructible if you wanted. Also, you could do things like if you don't want to create 20 different trees, you could create just this one, take out a slice, and now it's a new tree because now it's shorter, or add another cone and it's bigger. So you don't necessarily have to do everything externally in the 3D model, or you can do some of that internally. And it, too, is a fully rendered 3D object. So I think that's about it for this tutorial. I didn't want it to be a full-fledged paint 3D 
tutorial, I really just want to show you that you can, you now have this new option. You can use the free to use Paint 3D to make 3D models and import them into your environment, into your, your project. You no longer have to be reliant on the uh, asset store. You can create your own now. And as you can see, uh, it's really simple to use. Whether you'd want to use these in your final project, uh, that's up to you. I'm thinking it's more for like placeholder graphics that you, you have something to wrap some code around. That way you can make a proof of concept and, and determine if certain functionality is even doable. Um, but that's about it for now. So that, that accomplished really what I wanted, that I've shown you this new program that's now available. As I said, you need to get the Windows 10 Creator update. And the program is called Paint 3D. And I plan on doing some more uh, in-depth tutorials about using Paint 3D. Maybe I'll even uh, make some, uh, create a small library that you guys can use for your project. We'll see how much uh, time I have to uh, dedicate to this. So that should about do it.